In January, the Young Hearts Company launched their first ever Young Writers Festival. After receiving 95 different applications, there were only five winners. I thought you never see that. that you rarely see that and you rarely see a woman do that. Yeah. And then the sister was the same thing. She's defending her brother, but she's not, there's no, she's not white. For the first part of their prize, the five very talented winners attended a masterclass with industry professional Ricky Beadnell Blair. We're joined by Ricky Beadle Blair, who is a choreographer, producer, writer, actor, but today he's just chilling out on a beanbag with me because that is also a very important job. I'm a beanbag chiller. You're a beanbag. He's on a professional beanbag chiller and he's teaching me how to beanbag chill just after he's been teaching some very talented writers uh, in a masterclass that he's held here for Hearts Theatre Company at the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith. How do you think you can influence young writers? Like, what would you like? What would you like the writers from today, for example, to get out of you? Um, out of your. It's very important that I ask them what do you need from this, and provide each individual with what they need, because um, they're going to be different kind of writers with different kind of work ethics and different kind of approaches and different audiences and um, and different career arcs, and some are going to be. You know, some are going to work for TV, some are going to just write for their fun, some of them are going to be playwrights, some are going to write for themselves to perform. And so it's really important to listen to them and, and try and help them follow the career path or the creative path they want to go. that we just heard from uh, from the young writers. We can't mention names or anything because it's an anonymous, an anonymous, an anonymous, an anonymous, an anonymous. An anonymous competition. Yeah. Uh, but was there any pieces that you related to at all or that you felt like you connected with more than others, say? That's a really interesting question. Mm, um, those. More <laughs> than the others, no. I, each one really spoke to me in the ways that I didn't expect so that you know we've all had tedious <laughs> um, frustrating uh, encounters on some form of social media if not tinder you know it's everyone's just every, facebook whatever everybody is you know just just back this emails we've all and anyway those frustrations that people are having through those mediums are just the same as the ones they were having before it's just that you feel like there should be more communication. I can actually speak to this person now. I can actually, I don't have to wait for them to call me back. I don't have to wait for a letter. I don't have, you know, they could be on the, they could have gone on holiday on the other side of the world and they can respond to me instantly. And yet still we're missing each other. Still we're lonely. Still there's missing communication. Um, and so that's a fascinating thing. So I really relate to that, but, you know, the one about the dog, my company is named after my dog. So oh. that sense of feeling, um, and my dog died, and I've named the company after her. And so the so that sense of feeling um, hopeless and despairing because things have gone wrong and you've lost your pet was one of the stories. You know, there was there was, uh, there was something in each one that I thought, ooh, I can relate to that. Even and so uh, maybe that's my job as an as an artist to kind of look for empathy. But I thought that the reason they'd won um, their places in this. Uh, competition and in this endeavour and this festival was the fact that they were great at connecting with um, making you feel included in the story. I your radio last week. I didn't need that back. Uh, 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 I'm, um, I'm afraid I'm still using it. You're, you're doing what? I'm still using it. I know you can't be still using it. I want my radio back please. Yeah, but it was last week. The following week Young Hearts launched auditions to find actors for the festival. I'm here on the rooftop garden at the Lyric Theatre in Hammersmith and I'm joined by Safia Kavaz who is one of the winners for the Lyric Festival writing competition. 
Young Writers Competition. So Safia, we know, well, I know, mm -hmm. because I was at the uh, writing masterclass that you wrote the piece Stickman. Yeah. Um, which was absolutely fantastic and Thank I can't you. wait for everyone to see it on the documentary. Um, what, in, what was the influence? What was behind Stickman? Could you maybe tell us a little bit about what it is for those who don't know it and what influenced you to write it? Well, the stimulus for the competition was power. So at first I thought, okay, what does power mean to me? But for me to figure out what it meant to me, I had to ask other people and a lot of people said power is success and having a lot of money and when you have money you can do anything you want and instead of writing a piece about that I thought that is completely opposite to what power means to me like you don't need a big um, balance to have a happy life so I thought about a character who was the complete opposite to what we think about in this life which was a homeless man and I sort of based it off what I know and where I'm from and like people I've seen around. Um, so yeah, it's basically about a guy who is a symbol for expressing um, all the things that we don't have that can still like make us happy. For example, like looking out on the world and seeing all the businessmen that still have faces like down and are unhappy and it's not really a, a traditional structure so it's pretty much just a combination of poetry and imagery to express that. On the radio and I would love to record it from it on a CD and it would, you know you love Queen and I would love, like we can have it in the flat together listen to it. Okay. After their auditions, I caught up with some of the actors to see how their audition went. I am joined by Max Percy, who was one of the actors that participated in the acting masterclass this morning with Anakin. And he has just done his audition for the piece Stickman. Just the audition for the protagonist in Stickman. It's a fantastic piece and it has to the be very well executed. The monologue was, I mean, reading it, like, because you, you don't really know what to expect at all with new writer, but I, I read it and it was just it's very funny and it's quite a clever monologue. It, 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 it's quite, I don't know, in its structure, it's circular, so like it just kind of ties itself up at the end. Yeah. I don't know, it was, it, was, it was great to do. We asked her a little bit about what she wants the audience to take away from this. Yeah. Um, as an actor, if you do get the piece, the role, what, could you remind us of the name? Um, uh, of the character, yes. Charlie. Charlie. If you get the, character, the part of Charlie, what do you want the audience to take away from this guy? What do you want well, to take what away from Well, what, what I gathered from the monologue was that it's a, someone that's hit on hard times or, or there's a yeah, clearly like a relationship with his father that he's had his father's managed to send him to therapy and and therapy's expensive as well and like when he was younger and then he's now sleeping on the street so he seems like a bit of um, a non-conformist maybe and it's um, I, I think I'll, I'll just have to read the play in yeah. you know, order to find out more. But for, for, for the audience to be taken away. Uh, Please, do not test me. I am going to break down. Honey, I think that you may have me confused. Please say that to Mark. Whilst the actors waited nervously backstage, ready to perform for the first night of the Lyric Festival, the audience fled in. I'm joined by one of the winners for the Young Hearts Writers Festival, Vincent Denise, who wrote the piece to send back. Um, Exclamation 
Mark lowercase accent. The piece is about uh, a tip, the Tinder app, which I'm sure everyone's aware of. Um, what inspired you? Is there anything in real life or about Tinder that affected you that inspired the piece? Well, it, it kind of came off the back of um, a story that my friend told me, um, and it's kind of a kind of imagined imagine add-on to that story, basically. Okay, could you um, tell us? But I was I was just intrigued because. Um, this, this friend was like talking to a hundred plus um, people, you know, on this app, and I thought yeah. that's a bit excessive. And uh, <laughs> what was interesting, so much choice. yeah, what was interesting, he was kind of, um, you know, he, he, he really saw it as kind of playing the game, and I would just that kind of stuck with me, like because you know we spent so much time kind of engaged with this this app, and uh, you know it's completely. Playing the, playing the field and you know all the all the players know that it's a game as well but at the same time I think there's something else I think there's something um, I, I don't know whether it, it empowers us liberates us because it, it, it you know it might be seen to do that and I, I don't know whether it actually takes power away from us wait I just now hey, you seem fun <laughs> <laughs> send Sarah, 22, three miles away. Active just now. You seem, uh, fun. <laughs> how you doing? Send. During the interval, we snuck backstage to see how the actors felt about their performances. So, Granite, saying you are the youngest actor in the Lyric Festival, the Young Hearts Festival, and you were in the piece Sparrow. You were playing the narrator and you were playing the boy. So, you've just done your performance. How did it go? Pretty well. Yeah. But I, like in the rehearsals, it was quite scary. But then when, the, when there's like an audience, it's much more better. You feel a lot more calm. But really? The, yeah. the audience really helped. I yeah. Think. Because the audience was so good. They just seemed really yeah, they just, Yeah, they were really just smiling like faces. And, uh, how, how they show their interest. That really helps an actor. And the little fingers of the boy. And they panicked and flew away from each other in a frenzy. <laughs> Do you want to do more? Yes, yes definitely. Yeah? I'm coming back next year. What was the highlight of the entire process? I think just meeting everyone. Yeah, making new friends. Yeah. You made a lot of friends? Yeah. yeah. Like, it was really nice just to hang out here with all the lads. And, <laughs> and they were all... <laughs> go for a cheeky <laughs> land was later. Like, they were all... Um, <laughs> they were all funny and they were all very supportive when it was us. <laughs> I want you to understand that I do not want your pity. And despite what you may think, I do not need you to free me no more. It's too late for that now. I'm joined by Connor Carroll, who was one of the winners of the Young Hearts Writing Festival. And he wrote the piece, It Is So Ordered. And they belted him one for good measure. Mama cried something fierce. Her boys being folded into custody. I just want to know, like, it's a, you know, it's a very good text like it's mm. not something you know we had um, we've had completely different pieces looking at different issues yeah, yeah. and the central theme was power mm. how the hell did you write that like uh, where did this where did the inspiration it came, for it come from uh, it's, it's so good it's like a movie scene thank you um, <laughs> it came from a, a quite a big news article last year about a man in America a black man in America who was um, exonerated from prison after 39 years for a crime he didn't commit and it was about, so I kind of took that story and that story that they made was a very happy one because it was about him being freed and getting out and being given loads of money because of all the years that he was in prison. Mm -hmm. But I always wanted to concentrate on the people that are still in prison and the people that are not being served by this the justice system in America and have been failed. Um, and I wanted to kind of, it's a, it's a bittersweet thing because it is about his own freedom and his own personal freedom. But by the end, I wanted to feel like that, I wanted the audience to think more about people that aren't being served rather than the happy ending so they can feel like they can walk away from it. So yeah, that was what it was. And the power thing was about who has the power to free these men. Is it, is it, his power can be found in forgiveness from one forgiving the other or is it literally being freed from your, from your prison? Is that where? The seamen, they will deliver this letter to you. In 2015, my pastor gives me a letter from 
Johnny Hus, I hold my actions. So do you want the audience to take away their own perception of what power is? Or yeah. do you want to give them, is there a certain mm. message you want to send? I present, I definitely think forgiveness is a massive part of it and that the power to forgive someone else is, is one of the most, um, I don't know, powerful things you can do to someone. <laughs> uh, it's one of the most powerful things Biggest to someone. sources of power. Power is oh. forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about being able to be bigger than, be bigger than yourself in a sense and think about someone else and empathise with them so much that you can see what it would mean to forgive them, even though what they might have done to you was something that has completely ruined your life. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Everything that exists naturally on the earth is rocks, flowers, air, water, everything we need to survive. I'm joined here by Roy Alexander Wise, who is a director at the Royal Court Theatre and has been here throughout the whole Young Hearts Festival to direct every single piece that is in the show. So, Roy, how's the whole process been? Apart from stressful? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Actually, it's not been as stressful as I thought it would be. Okay. Um, and I think that's because, um, one, there's such an amazing team of people on board and they're, you know, kind of willing to support in every which way they can, like down from printing new scripts, um, like, you know, people just appearing with a new fresh coffee for me and I'm like, I've never had this kind of treatment yeah. before. <laughs> but just really like looking after me in order to kind of look after the whole show because I guess it is quite a big task to in the space of like four days, uh, direct all of the, the plays, 10 short plays. And, and some of the plays, you know, need a bit of work and editing, and that's, you know, the professional plays as well as the young people's plays. Because, you know, it's, you know, nobody writes a, a perfect play straight off. Um, and working with the actors has, has been like an absolute dream, you know. And there was, we've had really brilliant moments where we've been in rehearsal with actors who are professional and young actors and just seeing the patience and the care that they have with one another, the exchange of skills and, and uh, craft has like been incredible to kind of watch, so it's been a brilliant process. I'm here in the studio at the Lyric Theatre and the Young Hearts Festival has just wrapped up. I'm sat with the artistic director of Hearts Theatre Company and the creator mm -hmm. of the Young Hearts Festival, Anakin. Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you feeling? I feel good. I feel oh, yeah, good. I feel really good. I feel really proud. It's strange when you work so long on something and then it's done. And like when you, you look forward to Christmas and then it's done in like the morning and you're just kind of a bit like, ow. Oh. So tomorrow's gonna be like boxing tomorrow day. Tomorrow I'm going to Barcelona, yo. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. That sounds like a good boxing day plan. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Hearts the company boxing day plan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so obviously you're gonna have a nice, well-deserved break. Yeah. It's been a little bit manic. Yeah. Uh, can you believe that you've got through the whole thing and it's went so well? I mean, you know, you, everything is, is surprising. You, 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 you plan and you always hope and you plan for it to go well. But then when it does, it is a bit, there is an element of surprise. Um, but, you know, it's not just me. There's a really great team, you know, Holly, my assistant. Roy is just incredible. Um, the, the, the guys here at The Lyric have been incredible. So it's, it's been a real team effort and the fluidity of it has been great. So it's been hard work in just the terms of the fact that there's been lots to do and coordinate, but it's been really easy, mm. which is great. Um, I do also just want to say... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fryer. <laughs> I know that something that you really focused in and you're really reining in on mm. this year from speaking to you previously, from speaking to Roy, who was the director, mm. um, is self-love. Self mm. Hashtag self-love, that should really catch I'm on. all about it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> loving it. I am loving self-love. Self -love. I'm good, good. and uh, so it should be. And is that something that you want the young creators to take Absolutely. away? I think um, it's, it's difficult because everything is relative, isn't it? And I, and I know, all I know is the, is the acting, the entertainment profession, but I think above all, it's the one profession, again, I say it loosely because I don't know, 
where you really need to love yourself and you really need to have that mental well-being and have your mind right and stuff because boy there are times when it doesn't treat you so well like sometimes i say that the you know that the acting industry is like that boyfriend that you love right and he treats you really badly but you just can't let go <laughs> do you know what i mean you just keep going back like this kind of tortured girlfriend like, why just like please i just i just want you to love me and then every so often they, they throw you something nice or they send you a nice text you know that when you're in a horrible yeah. relationship so and you like, get oh. a miss you babe and you're just like yeah oh god yeah, you forget oh, about actually, you, do you, you want to come around tonight yeah, all right. <laughs> Why did I go around? Yeah, exactly. What have I done? You forget about the four months where they ignored you, but you got an arm yeah. issue, babe, and you're suddenly like... <gasps> so, in those moments, you oh. really need to kind of latch on to something else. Something else needs to sustain you because, because you keep getting the no or you're not getting the opportunity, and it's really, really hard sometimes to separate that from you. Yeah. You reflect it to you, I'm not good enough and I'm not talented enough and I'm not worthy of that job. And it's not that, it's not that at all. And I think that's really important to mm-hmm. learn it, to love yourself and to treat yourself well and to think good thoughts. Yeah. After the first and second night of the festival, Binton Deneen and Connor Carroll, both young writers, took the title home after being crowned the audience's favourites, proving once and for all that talent needs to be nurtured and opportunities have to be given. We can't wait to see what's next in store for Young Hearts.